Hello, everybody. So uh, today is day 20 of a month of letting go. And uh, this week we have been exploring the reasons why it's hard to let go. Excuse me, my voice is kind of going today. And uh, we've talked about a bit about um, the fact that it's painful. Um, and therefore scary. And the fact that it's a lot of it is rooted in our subconscious. So we don't even know it's there. We can't even go digging around for it to let it go. Um, but we encounter a lot of resistance for whatever reason. And the thing about that is the process has to start with your willingness to let go. If you're not willing to let go, you're not going to be able to do it. Now, don't take that step and be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm never going to be willing to let go. I have too much anger or whatever. That, it's not going to happen all at once. <laughs> None of this is going to happen all at once. Um, as you work with yourself, you can start to you can start to shift your mindset about this. Um, it doesn't, it's not about forcing yourself to let go. You can never force yourself to let go. That's impossible. But you want to create a sense of openness and readiness to release whatever no longer serves you. Um, so it's like the foundation. And what it means to be willing to let go is that you are ready to confront and release the things that hurt you. Even if the actual release doesn't happen immediately. So you have to be willing to feel pain. Sorry, guys. You gotta be willing to do that. That's a, you have to be willing to sit in an uncomfortable feeling and you'll not always get it right. You won't always get it right and that is okay. You practice. You keep practicing. And every time it gets a little easier. And you're able to do it more often. Um, you might not feel ready to get to like let go of a hurt that someone did. But let's say someone betrayed you. You might not be ready to let go of that. That's okay. But right now, or maybe one day soon, you'd be willing to consider letting it go. Or be willing to be willing to let it go. Um, it's, a, it's a first step. It's a powerful first step. You're not going to get to being willing to let go from refusing to let go like that. It's going to be like, oh, maybe, yeah, I mean, yeah, I should probably let that go. <laughs> you know? And from there, you start thinking about it and considering it. And after a while, it doesn't seem like such a bad thing or impossible thing because you're thinking about it. And it's more of a possibility in your mind. And as you think more about it, it becomes more of a possibility. Um, and that really opens the door to deeper healing. Um, it's just a significant step. If you can just say, yeah, I should probably let that go. Or maybe one day I'll let that go. Like, consider letting it go. That's the first step. Um, so, yeah, willingness isn't going to like... It, 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 the reason this entire talk video is directed or, you know, about willingness is because it's not easy to will yourself to let go of something that you've been holding on to. You held on to it because you want to hold, hold on to it for whatever reason. I'm not saying it's like, yeah, I want it. It's, there's something inside of you that's like, I want it. <laughs> but, um, one thing that you can do for yourself is to start cultivating conditions to encourage you to be more willing. So, we talk a lot about mindfulness, objective observation, create a space inside of you that is safe 
and it's not judgmental. So it's objective. I don't like saying not judgmental because the word judgmental is in it. Objective, right? It's an objective mental space and a compassionate understanding of yourself. Um, and it can be hard. And, you know, everything like I've been saying, everything goes in layers. I am getting better at being objective. But then I'll peel back a later and be like, oh, <laughs> I was totally judging that and I had no idea. It's a matter of being willing to do it. Um, you know, and it, it can start with just objective observation or even observation that you intend to become objective. Compassion for yourself, understanding for yourself and watching these things come and go. Um, observing these attachments, these blocks, this disturbances in your energy, the emotions, the thoughts, just, uh, just observing all of that without, objectively, let's say observing all that objectively will make it easier to feel willing to release them. Because if you can look at them objectively, I, I kind of tell you guys, so that's tough. <laughs> I mean, don't feel bad about yourself if you can't do it at first. I'm still, I, I still, what was it the other day that I finally kind of, I got a glimpse of what true objective observation would be. And it's like, oh, that's not how I do it right now. <laughs> like the idea, this is what it was. So I watch my thoughts. I watch my feelings. I can see, see them. You know what I mean? I'm aware of them. I'm witnessing them. But I'm still, it's still very difficult for me to be objective about it. I still get caught up in them. Right. <laughs> um, even if I'm just watching them, it pulls you in. You know what I mean? It's, it's it pulls you in. <laughs> That's what it does. And uh, the other day, I got this just really brief moment of sort of understanding of the idea of taking a step back and watching it like really watching it rather than just being aware of it, but just being like, Oh, look at that. Oh, huh. you know, like I got, it, it was like a, a momentary flash. <laughs> so you're not alone in, in having a hard time doing this. It is difficult to do. And I don't like to keep saying that because it'll reinforce it in your head, but you can do it. And don't, you know, just cultivate compassion for yourself. So if you're not doing it immediately, you're like, oh, that's normal. That's okay. And just be compassionate with yourself. I know I keep saying that, but it's important. <laughs> um, so the resistance, resistance very often to anything is about fear. Um, it's fear of the unknown, fear of change, fear of, fear of, losing part of our identity. We've discussed that quite a bit. Um, and addressing the resistance with what is it? Compassion is really important. Um, let's say you want to get rid of a, well, you, you're thinking about letting go of a toxic relationship. Um, and you're, but you're resistant to it, right? Because that's how it works. <laughs> Um, it's normal and whatever it is you're, res you're resistant to, you can kind of think about like, well, what are my fears here? What am I afraid of is going to happen when I let this go? What do I think is going to happen when I let this go? What am I afraid of? And, uh, it's good to explore it, but again, with objective T, <laughs> objectivity um because you don't want to scare the shit out of yourself <laughs> um and recognize, recognizing that is good when you're building a relationship with your resistance getting to know it um it can help dissolve it over time do you get what i mean by that <laughs> like oh i'm resistant there you are again i see you <laughs> Um, and when you become more and more familiar, it becomes less and less scary. That could help. 
another thing that really helps with the willingness is curiosity. So just think about, you've got these fears, but well, think about what life might be like if you do let go. Okay, so you've got this fear that you'll be alone forever, <laughs> you know, which is, I mean, trust me, for someone who's been alone a lot, it's, it's fine. You're going to be fine. <laughs> um, but look at the opposite. Well, maybe this is going to open me up for a better relationship. Maybe I'll find someone who I can really relate to and communicate with and who treats me well. I don't want this guy. This guy's a douchebag. <laughs> um, you know, or like, okay, so let's think about letting go of my anger towards some of my family members, um, my extended family members. And that is hard. And it's like, I feel a little bit like it's betraying my uncle. Um, well, we're going to get into forgiveness later. Sorry, I've got like a lot of tension that's kind of coming out of here, so that's good. Um, so when you're curious about something, though, when you start kind of imagining what life could be like in a good way, it opens up new possibilities and it can reduce the fear of the unknown. Now, I'm going to say for me, a lot of times, even excitement feels like fear. That one got me. <laughs> Um, like, just ask yourself, though, what experience could I have or what could I do if this weren't in my way, if I weren't holding on to this, if I could just let this go? That question can, can you know, get you in the way to, to letting go of that resistance. Um, so curiosity is more, it's like a tool to expand your perspective and invite a sense of wonder and openness into the process of letting go. Now, the next one is a bit tough. Willingness and self-trust. A lot of us coming out of some issues or even in the middle of some issues do not trust ourselves. And understandably so. <laughs> to be quite honest, understandably so. Um, oh, my throat's so dry. Um, I know for me, I have let myself down a million times. Um, I have let other people down a lot. I have completely destroyed my integrity. And integrity, if you don't know, <laughs> is being whole. So your word matching your actions. If you say something, you're going to say you're going to do something, you do it. If you don't, you don't have integrity. <laughs> Like that's that's a lack of integrity and it is I used to have so much integrity and it it is something that kills me but I'm working on letting go of my anger towards myself about that and becoming more aware of when I say I'll do something because sometimes I'll say I'll do something and I don't even really notice it uh, so there's that Trusting yourself is, you want to believe that you can handle whatever comes up. And that's such a hard thing to do because a lot of times you're like, but I have seen that I can't. <laughs> um, and I, you know, this is a point that I don't even, I think this is an advanced point. Like this is like, okay, after you've healed a bunch, when you're ready to trust yourself, it'll help in the willingness to let go. But um a lot of times. I mean, like, I can't really speak to trusting myself, to be quite honest, because uh, I'm still in the process of shifting over to it. I have, um, with all the, the tension that I've let go of in my body, I'm feeling less anxious, but there's still a lot of anxiety, and uh, I've committed myself to a couple of things that are <sighs> important, and I do not trust myself to get them done well, No matter how hard I try, really, but yeah, I'm just scared. I'm scared. And 
that comes a lot from, from lack of self-trust. Um, but there are limiting beliefs there. I don't really like it. I'm feeling a lot of resistance to talking about self-trust. Um, you know, the thing about self-trust is the only way you can build it is by showing up for yourself consistently. Start with, I mean, the easiest person it is to tell you're going to do something and then not do it is yourself. Um, it's so easy. But start with little things. Little, little things. I'm going to go to the post office and mail this letter today. And go to the post office and mail a letter. You know what I mean? Like, do that consciously. Because you trust that you don't just, oh, oh, trust myself. Got it. Like, you're not going to do that. I can't do that. You can't do that. No one can do that. Especially if you have proof positive that you can't be trusted. So the point is to build that up. Build up not only your trust in yourself, but in your discipline to take care of the things that you need to take care of. Um, so you can strengthen your...